Hey guys, Dr. Cummins here. Today I want to talk about the side effects of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, better known as NSAIDs. The premise of taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is because they reduce the inflammation, pain, and stiffness associated with ankylosing spondylitis and other forms of spondyloarthritis. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs reduce inflammation and pain and stiffness because they reduce the production of inflammatory chemicals in the body called prostaglandins. Now, the problem with doing this is that prostaglandins have a lot of other functions in the body other than producing inflammation and pain. A lot of these other functions that prostaglandins do in the body are actually very beneficial for the body and needed. One of the main things that prostaglandins do is they stimulate the production of mucus on top of our gut lining. This mucus layer on top of our intestinal cells, it actually nourishes our intestinal cells and it protects our intestinal cells from harmful bacteria. You can see right here that the mucus layer is separating harmful bacteria from the intestinal cells because once the harmful bacteria attach to the intestinal cells, this is what causes damage and inflammation uh, to the cells of the gut lining. So when you take NSAIDs to reduce prostaglandins, this is going to reduce the mucus layer. Now the harmful bacteria are able to attach to our intestinal cells, and again, this causes damage and inflammation to the cells of the gut lining. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs also damage the mitochondria inside of our intestinal cells. When you damage the mitochondria, you damage the intestinal cell. And then this also disrupts the tight junctions between our intestinal cells. If you remember uh, from my last article and video of how important the tight junctions are between the intestinal cells to keep those cells tight and strong together so we don't get uh, bacteria and their toxins and undigested food particles going between the cells of our gut lining to stimulate our gut immune system, which leads to a lot of chronic inflammation in the body. So again, NSAIDs directly damage mitochondria in the cells of our intestinal lining. When it damages the mitochondria, this damages the intestinal cell, and this damages the tight junctions between the intestinal cells. Now toxins such as LPS, we talked about last time, lipopolysaccharide, that is secreted from gram-negative bacteria can get through the intestinal cells and that stimulates cells of the immune system and as talked about last time now the cells of the immune system because they are stimulated from LPS from gram-negative bacteria now the cells of the immune system will increase their production of TNF-alpha so you can see one of the reasons that TNF-alpha is increased in the body and most individuals with ankylosing spondylitis and other forms of spondyloarthritis are familiar with TNF-alpha because it's a target of biologic drugs such as Embrel and Humira and Remicade. So when TNF-alpha is increased that brings in other cells of the immune system called neutrophils and the neutrophils they're trying to repair uh, damage that is done in the body and in this case is our intestinal cells. Neutrophils, these cells of the immune system, will increase production of reactive oxygen species. This causes even more inflammation and damage to the cells of our gut lining. What happens with this whole process and damage to these cells is that causes damage to the microvilli of our intestinal cells. These finger-like projections at the top of our intestinal cells that is where the absorption of nutrients takes place. But after all of this inflammation, damaging the intestinal cells, those microvilli get damaged. That's depicted right here. So we get malabsorption of nutrients in the body. So we'll just kind of go through this uh, one more time. Showing this diagram, we have our mucus layer right here, sitting on top of our intestinal cells, of the gut lining. And then our third layer is our immune cells at the bottom. All three of these layers need to be in balance. It's when these three layers 
are out of balance, that we get chronic inflammation throughout the body. And as I talked about in the last article in the last video, because of molecular mimicry, that chronic inflammation will attack uh, the joints of the spine, the hips, the ribs, the sternum, tendon below the kneecap, the heel, the Achilles tendon. Everywhere we feel the pain, stiffness of ankylosing spondylitis and other forms of spondyloarthritis. So again, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they reduce an uh, inflammatory chemical in the body called prostaglandins. But remember, prostaglandins are very important, especially for stimulating the production of mucus on top of our gut lining. And that mucus layer protects our intestinal cells from harmful bacteria. But when we take NSAIDs, that reduces that mucus layer, kind of takes it away. Now the intestinal cells are exposed. The harmful bacteria can now directly, directly attach to our intestinal cells. This damages those cells of the gut lining. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs also directly damage the mitochondria within the intestinal cells. This damages the cell, and that also damages the tight junctions between the cells, causing leaky gut, which allows toxins from the bacteria, LPS, to get through the gut lining. LPS now interacts with cells of the immune system. Once the cells of the immune system are stimulated by the bacterial toxin, especially from gram-negative bacteria, LPS, then the immune system cells will increase their production of TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha draws in more cells of the immune system called neutrophils. These cells will secrete uh, reactive oxygen species and cause more inflammation and damage to the cells of the gut lining. Uh, we also we get malabsorption because of damage to the microvilli, the part of the intestinal cells that absorbs nutrients. Once those are damaged and blunted, we get malabsorption of nutrients.